Hello guys and welcome to part 4 of the spy game tutorial where we're creating the sliding puzzle game. So in the last part we managed to make all the tiles move when we click on them and the ones that doesn't have a space, a white space on it or empty space next to it, it's not gonna move. So today I want to focus on two more classes that we're going to be using, which is the button and the UI. So we can add the buttons on the side here for shuffling and reset and also the timer and the high score. Okay, so I think on this part we're just going to create those two classes and then the next part we will implement the shuffle function because the shuffle function is going to be quite big. Okay. So let's go to our sprite class and in here, if you watch my previous video on the snake game, we created also a button class in there and a UI class. You can probably just copy and paste those two classes because we're going to be using the same. It's going to be very similar. I think the UI class is going to be the same, just the button function is going to be slightly different, but it doesn't matter. You can use that. It's just to add a button to your game, basically. Okay, so let's start with the UI class, which is a bit simpler than the button. So we're going to create a class called uh, UI element, and we're going to define a constructor for it. And the constructor will take a X and Y for the positions and a text. Okay, so self dot X, self dot Y equals X and Y, self dot text equals text. And we just define a draw function for it. This draw function, we're just going to take this screen. To draw on it and we create a function a font it's going to be very similar to what we've done in here so we create the font and then a font surface where we render and then we're just going to blint into the screen so the pi game dot font dot sys font we're going to take consolas and let's see maybe like a 40 let's put 50 size and we have a text which is going to be the font dot render pass the self the text inside true for smoothing the edges and a white color and then we do screen dot blitz uh, text and self dot x self dot y okay that's it for the ui element just to test in here let's just create a test object of the ui element uh, let's give it 500 500 and a test and we just have to draw this in here uh, i need to call this self actually self dot test Self dot test dot draw self dot screen. So if I run this, then we have the test in here. Okay. Now let's go back in here and let's create the button. For the button, we're going to initialize the constructor. Let's give it x and y coordinates, a width and a height. For the button a text. And we can pass a color in there as well, actually. Self dot color equals color self dot width self dot height equals width and height self dot x self dot y equals x and y and the last one uh, self dot text equals text okay let's do a draw function here which will take the screen 
and in here we're gonna draw a rectangle so by game dot draw dot rect we're gonna pass this screen and self dot color and then in here is a rect which is gonna be the self dot x self dot y self dot width self dot height and then we make a font again just like we've done it to all of the other ones consolas and size of let's say 30 text is equals to font dot render self dot text true and uh what's color for the text i guess i'll have to specify in here as well text text color color self the text color text color sorry guys yeah just add this text color in here so we can pass it on the constructor as well and then we can call this one in here and then to draw, we're gonna do something very similar to what we did in here. So we can just copy this and paste it there because we want the text to be in the middle of the button, right? And just what I forgot here was the self the font size equals to self the font dot size self.text and then in here instead of tile size we're gonna pass in the width and the height and then we draw the font surface or oh, actually it's gonna be the text in here draw y okay and then this one is a screen and we can also have a click function which is going to be similar to this one but instead of getting the rect left we are going to get just the x and then in here is going to be x plus self dot width and then in here is y and y plus self dot height Okay, let me see if I didn't make any mistakes in this. Uh, so let's create a button equals button and gonna do 400, 400, 200 by 100, test. Uh, color we're gonna do white and the text color is gonna be black and uh, we need to draw this self dot button dot draw self dot screen let me see okay what's happening here ah uh, this one is not self this one is just like that there we go okay we have that but it's not drawing on it uh, it's because I need to in here it needs to be the self dot color text in here I just passed the same color in there let's see if this is gonna work now no uh, it's text color very difficult today uh, okay uh, for some reason the text is being drawn on the top there Okay, I think I need to actually add the self dot x and self dot y to these guys here. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, so the only thing that was missing here is the self dot x. We need to add to all of this, and the self dot y add to all of this. Now, if we run it, we have the button in there with the text in the middle, and this is still working. Okay, so just to end this episode, we're going to create the buttons 
and the text. So let's just delete this test that we've done it uh, here and here. And I think I'm going to do this just straight in here. As we only have two buttons, we're going to make a buttons list. And let's just append a button. 775 I have this values already from the other game so I'm just passing the same so this is going to be the shuffle button uh, oops this is the size actually like that this is the shuffle and the color is going to be white and the text is going to be black I'll just copy and paste this change this one for reset Okay, they have the same size, the same X, but this, the Y, is going to be 170. It's going to be a bit lower. Let's just draw this. So, for button, self.buttons list, button.draw, uh, self.screen. Let me see what this does. Okay, so now I have these two buttons in here. And to finalize, let's just write this functionality, I think, for these two buttons. So right after all of this, when we click with the mouse, we want to go back in line with this event type here. It's the same line here. We're going to do for button and self.buttons list. And we're going to check actually no this needs to be one more indentation so it needs to be in line here so we're, we're already checking if we click with the mouse here so we can just continue seeing so we check for all of this and then we check for all the buttons if we're pressing the button so if button dot is it click our function mouse x mouse y let's just print the button text in here to test and yeah so if I click on the shuffle button it prints shuffle if I click on the reset it prints reset okay that's all good then here we're gonna check if the button dot text is equal to shuffle and if the button dot text is equal to reset. If it's equal to shuffle, then we're going to create a function called self dot shuffle. Self dot shuffle, I think. What? Well, start shuffle. And we're going to have the timer as well. So once we click on the shuffle, we should reset the timer. So shuffle time is equals to zero because we're going to be shuffling for like five seconds or something like that so every time i click on the button shuffle we should reset this time and then start again and shuffle for another five seconds and then we reset that and then we call the start sh shuffle function which we're going to create in the next episode which is going to handle all the shuffling and moving the pieces for the reset, we just call the new function again, and that's all. So every time we click on the reset button, we just create a new game. So we run all of this again, and it creates a new game, basically. Oh, actually, I just realized that this is not going to be a function. It's going to be instance variable. Start fun shuffle. We're going to change that to true. At the beginning here on the constructor, we can add these two functions and we can just change this to false. So start function, start shuffling, we start false. So if we click the button, we reset the timer and we change it to true. And then in the shuffle function, it's going to be shuffling for a few seconds. And at some after five seconds, we'll turn this to false and we we'll stop shuffling. That's the idea of it. Okay, so I'll see you guys on the next 
episodes.